you can take off vertically and then you can fly around in a plane without the necessity to tilt the aircraft. In the opening scenes of science fiction, films like Blade Runner 2049, Elysium, or even The Fifth Element, the future always looks the same. Cities stretch endlessly into the sky. Neon lights reflect off glass towers. And above it all, aircraft move effortlessly in every direction. They rise vertically, stop midair, slide sideways, then disappear between buildings with impossible precision. For decades, those scenes felt like pure fantasy. But what if one of the key technologies behind that vision was not invented in the future at all? What if it was imagined more than 100 years ago, quietly tested, forgotten, and now reborn? Today's story is about a strange rotating machine that looks more like industrial art than an aircraft propeller. A technology that once pushed ships sideways through water is now being redesigned to lift vehicles straight into the air. This is the story of cycloidal propellers and why they might redefine how future aircraft move. Before diving deeper into this remarkable technology and its modern revival, subscribe to the channel. If advanced engineering, future flight, and forgotten inventions coming back to life sound interesting, subscribing ensures you won't miss what comes next. The idea behind cycloidal propulsion is far older than most people realize. Long before drones, electric motors, or lightweight composites existed, engineers were already imagining new ways to move vehicles through air and water. In 1909, Russian military engineer E.P. Sverchkov designed a strange aircraft concept known as the Samoljot. Instead of traditional wings or propellers, it relied on rotating paddle-like structures. The vehicle never flew, but it marked one of the earliest serious attempts to explore cy cycloidal motion for propulsion. Interest in the concept continued into the 1930s. In Germany, aircraft designer Adolf Rohrbach worked on cyclorotor ideas that promised better control and maneuverability than conventional propellers. The German Research Institute for Aviation evaluated these designs, but skepticism from international aviation journals and limited funding prevented them from reaching operational use. At the time, aviation was still fighting for basic reliability and radical ideas struggled to survive. Some experiments were less credible. One infamous design by Jonathan Edward Caldwell attempted to mimic the flapping motion of a goose using rotating wings. The project collapsed amid fraud accusations and no working aircraft was ever produced. Despite these failures, the era was defined by bold experimentation as engineers searched for alternatives to fixed wings and spinning propellers. One of the most unusual full-scale attempts was the Schroeder S1 in 1930. This aircraft used a cyclorotor purely for forward thrust, giving it an appearance closer to a flying agricultural machine than a conventional airplane. While little documentation remains, it stands as evidence that cycloidal propulsion was taken seriously by multiple engineers during aviation's formative years. The true breakthrough for cycloidal technology did not come from the sky, but from the sea. In 1931, Ernst Schneider patented what would become the Voith Schneider propeller. Unlike experimental aircraft, this system found immediate practical use. By 1937, it was successfully tested for marine propulsion, where precision and control mattered more than speed. The Voith Schneider propeller revolutionized how ships maneuvered. Instead of relying on rudders and forward motion, vessels equipped with this system could move sideways, rotate in place, or generate thrust in any direction instantly. Tugboats, ferries, and harbor vessels benefited enormously from this capability, especially in tight spaces where conventional propellers struggled. During World War II, the military recognized the potential of this technology, though large-scale adoption was limited by production demands and the system's novelty. After the war, its advantages became impossible to ignore. Civil ports, offshore platforms, and specialized vessels embraced the Voith Schneider propeller for its safety, efficiency, and unmatched control. Over the decades, improvements in materials, hydrodynamics, and electronic controls refined the system. Today, it is used not only in ships, but also in dynamic positioning systems for floating cranes and even renewable energy applications such as tidal turbines. Despite its intimidating appearance out of the water, its elegance becomes clear when seen in action. 
smoothly pushing vessels in any direction without turning the hull. This long-term success in marine environments naturally raised an important question. If cycloidal propulsion works so well in water, could it be adapted for air? The idea is simple in theory, but complex in execution. A cycloidal propeller consists of multiple aerofoil blades arranged around a rotating drum. As the drum spins, each blade changes its angle of attack depending on its position in the rotation. This coordinated movement allows the system to generate lift or thrust in a single chosen direction. Unlike conventional propellers, where the blade tips move faster than the intersections, all parts of a cyclorotor move at the same speed. This creates more uniform lift and significantly reduces noise by avoiding strong tip vortices. In an age where urban air mobility demands quiet operation, this advantage cannot be overstated. The ability to rapidly change thrust direction is another major benefit. By adjusting blade angles, a cyclorotor can push upward, downward, or sideways almost instantly. Mechanical linkages traditionally handled this synchronization while modern designs increasingly rely on individual electric actuators for each blade, allowing even finer control. However, the challenges are substantial. Cyclorotors require complex control systems, precise timing, and robust structures capable of withstanding enormous centrifugal forces. As rotation speed increases, the rotor constantly tries to pull itself apart. The systems are also physically larger and heavier than traditional propellers which can limit their usefulness in weight-sensitive aircraft. Despite these challenges, the dream refused to die. Engineers continued refining the concept, waiting for materials, motors, and control electronics to catch up with the idea. That moment may have arrived with Cyclotech. Cyclotech is an Austrian company that has spent over 15 years developing cyclorotors specifically for aviation. Their approach combines lightweight carbon fiber structures high-speed electric motors, and advanced control algorithms. The result is a compact cycloidal propulsion unit designed for electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles. Their primary test platform features four cyclorotors mounted to a lightweight frame weighing just 83 kilograms. Each rotor spins at up to 3,100 revolutions per minute. Indoor tethered flights demonstrated stable lift and control, and in 2023, Regulatory approval allowed outdoor flight testing under supervision. What makes Cyclotech's system remarkable is not raw speed or endurance, but precision. Test footage shows smoke streams being redirected instantly, visual proof of thrust vectoring without tilting the entire vehicle. This level of control opens possibilities for safer, more stable urban flight. Still, questions remain. Battery weight severely limits flight time, and competing designs using conventional propellers have already achieved longer endurance with simpler systems. Vehicles like the Jetson 1 demonstrate that mature technologies can deliver impressive results today. Whether cyclorotors will outperform conventional designs in aviation is not yet clear. What is clear is that they offer a fundamentally different way to think about flight. Instead of forcing an aircraft to move in one direction and correcting afterward, Cycloidal propulsion allows thrust to be directed exactly where it is needed from the start. This makes cyclorotors uniquely suited for tight spaces, precise maneuvers, and potentially safer urban environments. Noise reduction alone could be a deciding factor as cities debate the future of air mobility. What began as a forgotten idea from the early 20th century may yet shape the skies of the 21st. As this journey through past inventions and future possibilities comes to an end, consider subscribing to the channel. More stories like this explore how old ideas resurface to redefine modern technology. Share thoughts in the comments about whether cyclorotors belong in the future of flight and stay tuned for what comes next.